Hey everybody, Tom Joya from Visionary Music Group here. Today we're introducing a new series of videos called Anatomy of the Mix. This will be a first video in a multi-part series where we take one song and we break it apart and explain how we put our mix together. And we'll analyze it from the top down and break down each element. So we hope you enjoy it. This first song is called The World is on Fire by Moguls of Mayhem. I'll play a little bit of it for you so you get an idea how the track goes. There'll be links below to this song so you can hear it in its entirety, mastered and finished. Also, please subscribe, click the like button if you like the video, and hit the notification button so we can let you know when more content is coming. Thanks. All right, so let's play it from the second half of the verse, a little bit of the pre-chorus, and some of the chorus so you get an idea of the song. So you have a general idea of what the song is. So let's dig in and talk a little bit about what's happening here in the mix. So looking at this session, you can see on the top where this audio is right here in green. That's the actual mix printed back into Pro Tools. And you see I have a bus here called Mix Print. The output of this auxiliary channel is Mix Print, which feeds the input of this audio channel and the input is Burrow. So that stands for my Burrow B2 Bomber. So I have four Lynx Aurora interfaces. So that gives me 32 channels analog outputs that get summed down to two through the summing mixers and go into the analog input of the Burrow. The digital output of the Burrow feeds back into the session. You have the best possible conversion going in and the other units are used for inserts for analog gear and digital gear as well. So for monitoring, I have the Dangerous Convert 2, which gives me a, a super accurate signal to listen to. And I also have ATC 25 monitors, which are great sounding for the size of my room. And the room's been tuned by Crossley Acoustics. So I know what I'm listening to is true. So in my mix bus, I have some processing. The main sort of heavy lifting processing is done in the analog world. You'll see this dangerous liaison B. So the dangerous liaison is a patching device with six paths, and I can send in and out any devices I want on those. So my path B has three devices that I have I'm using right now in the mix down path. And that would be the Tone Lux compressors, the dangerous compressor, and the dangerous back CQ. So the Dangerous Back CQ gives me some lift in the high end and in the low end and filters out any unnecessary things in the ultra highs and lows we don't want. The Tone Lux has a great lower mid-range and a really great low end feeling when you use that compressor. And I can dial it back, so I have it on about 40% mix. Though so it's at 20 to one, and it just does something beautiful to the mix. And I want to thank my buddy Michael James, who's a great engineer and producer, who hit me to that. And I've pretty much copied the settings and left them. Then the Dangerous Compressor is used as another level of glue. So I'm going to play the chorus and just pop in and out the Dangerous Liaison Loop, which is the three outboard pieces of analog gear. So here it's in. out. So you can really hear the difference with that. I mix into all of these things. 
it allows me to do a lot less work on individual channels and groups of sounds by having this in place. And I've experimented a lot, and it's in my mix template. You'll have to do the same. Just check all the gear you have and try all these different things. Maybe some of this will inspire you what to do or maybe what not to do. So first in the chain, though, I do have this plugin, the Brainworks Plugin Alliance VSC2. Kind of an SSL compressor vibe. It's definitely a glue factor and a little bit of gain makeup, not a lot. It's The meters are barely touching on this one. Second one is the Greg Wells Mixcentric. I have no idea what this does, but it sounds great. And when I push it up three bars, it does a little sheen on the high end and, and it gives some kind of focus to the lower mids that's great. And I can't really explain it, but it really helps. Then the Manly Massive Passive, some high end and low end boost, some lower mid boost. I can adjust these per song or not use it at all, depending upon what the source material needs. The Brainworks V2 Stereo Midside Equalizer. I kind of weaned off the EQ part of it as I got this analog chain together. What I really still like on it is this stereo width portion. So let's check out, if you watch that, if I click here, back on the pre-chorus, it's on 120. If I click up to the chorus, it goes up to 132. If I'm in the verse, it's at 107. I'm gradually widening the tune and giving it a big expansion in the chorus. So it helps make my life easier making the choruses pay off. FabFilter Pro-L. FabFilter stuff, all of it's great. I use a lot of it. This limiter is mainly to keep me out of trouble so I don't hit the ceiling and distort. And the last piece in the chain, which is probably one of the most important, and it doesn't even do anything to the sound, is another plug-in alliance plug-in, the adapter AB. What's great about this is you can analyze your signal and you can compare it to other records. So here, check this out. So we're seeing a graph of my frequency response. So we're gonna play mine and then we're gonna bounce off to another song you may or may not recognize and look at that. So you can see the differences in the graph. What happens is, is that particular song is mastered. And what's great about this plugin is you can match the levels. So before I'd have to have a second track set up with playlists and I'd have to flip back and forth, and I'd have to gain match and it would change from song to song. This automatically takes care of it. So it's an awesome plugin and it's well worth every penny. So moving down the session, we have in yellow our VCA masters. These allow us to make volume changes to groups of instruments without affecting their compression or processing. And we can also do global moves. So let's say I want to make the whole song a little lower in the verse. I want to kick it up in the chorus. I want to hit the downbeats of the chorus. I want to just take a global vocal and go plus one or minus one. Very quick and easy to do it without changing the tonality of anything. Stem mixes. Your client wants stem mixes. You want to take a TV mix to go sing and play along at a gig. You can rerun your mix and just mute what you want at the VCA level. No reason to touch anything or harm any work you did in the mix. Moving down in blue is my sidechain. All these sidechain processors are mainly gain and tone processing. They're not your normal send to a delay, send to a reverb. And I'll explain those. I'll send certain things or groups of things to them. So for instance, send A has my API 2500 compressor. It's set to six to one, it's hitting pretty hard. And I have it set now at minus 24. Depending upon the song, you may see this ride up and down in different parts of the song to create dynamics and intensity. All my drums, percussion, loops, sound effects that are percussive and basses go through here gives a glue. Next one down, B, is a Neve compressor, followed by this Brainworks EQ with a stereo widener. This is for all the things on the side. So keyboards, sustaining instruments, maybe some guitar things that are bouncing around on the outside that have like delays or something. And the idea with this is, is that it, it, it gives a different level of intensity and a different pump between 
let's say, the API and, and this. So different instruments are going to react and address tonally their compressors differently. So my sidechain C compressor used to be my 21176s that were analog. But I kind of like this UAD one, and I decided to move the analogs over as a direct insert on the kick and snare. I felt they were more important there. And this sounds really great. So I can slide this up and down to taste for some bite in the mid-range and a different sort of aggressive quality. Anything may go in there. Tape sidechain. Ampex tape machine sounds great in this particular mode kind of flattens out the transients around things off a little bit if I have something I want to not hit so hard or be so pointy be a little less digitally accurate I'll send it in there distressor shells ITB what does that mean shells to me are the kick snare toms I used to do this with two distressors I really love them I had four of them but the plug in so good I decided to try it and I kind of digging it and I sold my distress you know you, you have so much stuff in these racks after a while the heat and the maintenance it gets a little crazy so the more I can transition into the box little by little I will do that so this is set up so the kick the snares the tom toms have this sort of crushing vibe to it that I used to use on my distressors kick and snare crush not original at all I robbed this from Andrew Sheps's video it's a great idea your kick and your snare go to a separate compressor dbx 160 and you slide that in to give them either more point more sustain more help in whatever way you see fit a long time ago i realized that i wanted to find a way to glue the kick drum and the basses together so i had a retro stay level compressor modeled after the gates stay level which i thought was fantastic but it was one box mono it was not cheap but it was worth every penny it let off a lot of heat and it used new old stock tubes so it was three or four hundred bucks every year to change them i wanted to try something to emulate it plus i felt like i wanted more of them on different things so i really was looking for a software version and i came up with this and it sounds great so i have a preset in here so the kick and the bass go to that shadow hills compressor then i have another version of this with a uh, billy decker another awesome nashville engineer you should check him out he's a badass and this is his sort of look at the stay level. And I use this as an alternate to the other one or a combination. So these things can be used in any combination to give tonal variety to your songs or, or push things in and out. I, I feel like we work hard to get the stereo field and we EQ to get the height, but we don't have anything to move forward and backwards in a 3D manner. And that's what I think all this compression does besides tonal shaping. Then I have a side chain for the bass with the Billy Decker's plug-in set different than the one that I had for the kick and the bass. Then I have a sub send for the basses. This is a, a model, I guess, of the Punch 10 or the DBX sub harmonic synthesizer. Uh, another Brainworks plug-in alliance thing. It's awesome. And then I put after it this Alicia EQ. I don't know what they did with this, but the low end of this is unbelievable for basses and anything low end. And then I have some stuff for guitars, standard LA3As, and then a Pultec and then the Billy Decker guitar thing's cool with the pull tech, so that's, that's a possible combination or, or one of... Then vocals. Vocals definitely need the sidechain thing to mold it. This replaced my one distressor I used to have on the vocal sidechain for some aggression. Then a sort of offshoot of that was the Slate distressor plug-in. I kind of added some EQ to it and a little saturation with some aggression on it. Then for a little more saturation and aggression, I started using this Abbey Road plugin. I tried it on a, on a mix. I think it was Chad Blake video, I saw it. And I really like what it did to certain things and I messed around with separate elements and I really dig it for vocals that need to be pushed ahead, especially in a rock track like this. Background vocals, the Billy Decker vocal plugin is cool. And the Fairchild, which is a great plugin. So I'm gonna play the chorus with all the side chain in for four bars and then I'm gonna take them out. You can hear the difference. In. Out. In. You can hear the difference. I'm sure you could find a way to do the same thing without these. 
But what's really important to know is the mix bus, the side chain, all the processing, all those levels are set in my template. It makes it way faster and it sounds pro way quicker. Also things that are set is my subgroups, so my aux masters. Talking about submasters for the drums. I have a kick submaster, a snare drum, tom tom, drums M, which stands for metal, which is overheads and cymbals, ambience for rooms and room samples, and then all the percussion is separated to different things. And you can see some of them have inactive plugins. I can activate anything and it's ready to go at any time. And they're already assigned to their respective side chains where I want them. I have my kick in and out mic. I have my kick sample. I have a kick ambient sample. I don't want to over process everything. So normally what I do is I worry about phase aligning and I put my SSL channel strip on it. And it feels like a compressor, behaves like a compressor. Then I send them to these subgroups and then I process them with some analog outboard. So on the kicks, I have a Tone Lux EQ. A snare, I have a Tone Lux EQ. Toms, a pair. Overheads, a pair. Guitars, I have API 500s. And then some other things I have on here is uh, 1176 for the snare. I usually have one dedicated to the snare and the kick with a pull tech, but these sounded good. I just needed the one in the one spot. So you can see I have these aux subgroups for every instrument. Now that we've talked a little bit about the drum subgroup, let's dig in and take a listen to the drums and check them out. So I have show hide markers, basically his track visibility markers set up, so I don't have to go moving up and down 100 tracks. Right there I just clicked on my drums plus their side chains. So if I solo the audio of the drums, I could take a listen to those in the chorus. So there's not a ton going on on the individual drum tracks. I have this, which is the, one of the greatest things invented ever. It's the uh, Brainworks SSL-E. I have one of those on every drum track, and I just work it like I would a console. And then I also have this Auto Align plugin. You can set a point source of one of them to be the master, and then everything else can phase align to that. Rather than just pushing the phase button and say, oh, the snare and the overheads, it's 180 degrees out of phase. This can not only adjust that, it can time align, and it can also adjust for out of phase that's not 180 degrees. So let's take a listen to the drums with the auto align in, and then we'll bypass. Out. in. So you can hear a change in the low end and how that's affected. So we don't really have a lot of reverb on the drums. On some of the ambient samples, we've added this reverb. It's a uh, slate reverb and it's the CLA snare, which is modeled after the Sony reverb. And then we have the 480 from Altaverb, which is really great. And then one of my favorite reverbs at any price, and it's only $50, is the Valhalla Vintage Verb. And, and this, can, this is, I think, we copied Tile Room from a PCM70. So it's, it's really awesome. It's very reasonable. So let's take a quick listen to our individual drums. So here's our kick in and out. Kick sample. So that's um, a slate sample, the CLA samples. Here's the ambient kick sample, which is just the overhead and rooms of the dry kick samples blended to taste. Now here's all three together. Moving on. 
onto the snares. Snare top and bottom. Sounds nice. Snare sample. This was a combination of the Ludwig Brass from CLA and the Brady snare, and I think that was a Blackbird sample. I'll put that together with the other snare. And I have ambient sample here, and this one is the same Ludwig brass, but more of the room. Here's all three together. And we're going to add the kicks. And I'm going to add the room mics. And the overheads and hat. So there's the drums. So you probably heard a lot of other percussive elements and you're wondering what they are. So let's dig into those right now. So the percussion in this song and sound effects were designed to accentuate the story of the song. So it's about greed and lusting for power, developing machines of war, mass destruction. So it was trying to sound industrial, like they were building these things, or almost like the Terminator, like these things were st stomping in on us also having some organic sounds and just some power to it. So let's listen to those in the chorus and see what they all sound like together. So that's everything. So let's talk about the individual elements. So I was watching Mad Max Fury Road and I thought, wow, this movie is the soundtrack is great. And there's the part when they had the chase and the guy's playing the guitar and with the flamethrower and the big drums, the taiko drums are playing. So I was like, that's a cool idea. And I already started putting in these taiko drums in here. And uh, I wanted to take this a step further and add some metallic elements to it. So let's hear the taiko drums first and then we'll add the metallic elements. So before I got into the metallic elements, I thought I need some low end. So I found an 808 kick sample I had, and I added from the uh, Superior Drummer Action set their kick. So that almost filled out like the whole clave rhythm of it. And I took the Action Tambourine, which filled out the rhythm for me, but then gave me some of the metallic elements. So to round it off, here are the three other elements of the metallic percussion. So here's the metallic low. Kind of industrial. Has a pitch to it. I remember changing the pitch to work. Here's another element of it in the higher register. And here's both. So let's check out the chorus with all these elements in and then with all the elements out. So when they're 
out, it sounds like a good rock band with a good drummer. When they're in, it sounds like a whole emotional response, a cinematic approach to it. So let's check out in the pre-chorus what happens. Here they come. A 660 snare drum reversed. That leads into a clap. Then I felt like I wanted to have some other element accentuating the downbeat and adding a rhythmic thing to it. So I found these samples of guns and I put those in and I, I realized in the back of my mind I must have been watching the Metallica documentary where Bob Rock, who's one of my favorites, has Headfield cocking the gun in time. So then to, to sort of bring some, I don't know, discomfort and agitation to, to have a release in the chorus, I added this loop that sort of builds and fades in. Then after that loop happens, there's a big like explosion on the downbeat. So all that together sort of makes this whole thing happen. So here's the drums and percussion together in the chorus. And without the percussion. Back in. It definitely rocks harder with it. So that's all our drums and our percussion and our sound effects. So moving on to our bass guitars. One part, multiple sources. So we have a DI, a model of an Ampeg SVT, set to mid-range, a little crunch, model of an SVT Pro set for all lows, and a distorted bass, which was the DI run out to the second channel of the diesel amp. They all feed one main bass bus, and on that main bass bus, we have the Manly Elop compressor. We have the Dangerous Liaison routing the Tone Lux EQ, API compressor, and the Tone Lux compressor. More for tone shaping than gain control, but Manly's taking care of that. Then we have this wonderful beast <laughs> adding some low end. A little bit of this for leveling, but the mix is down pretty low. And then some scooping, I guess, where it's interfering with the low end percussion. Then we mult out to two different high bass auxes. And they cut the low end, they boost the high end, they have more attack. And they're compressed a little bit so it pokes out. So I have two sources of that. You can see one is muted, it'll automate on. So some are used in the chorus, some aren't. So here's the DI through all of the aux ends. SVT, sounds really close. Low amp. And now dirty. Put them together. So when you hear that, you're like, wow, that distorted bass, why do you have that in there? It doesn't sound as good. It doesn't sound as good soloed, but in the track with the guitars, it lets the bass compete and it gives you a feeling of the articulation. So here's our chorus with drums, basses, percussion, sound effects. Now, an interesting thing to check out would be taking off our auto align. Now, you notice I have it on the basses. So what I've done was I phase align the DI to the kick 
and all those other low end percussion sounds are phased to the kick. Anything hitting on a backbeat is phased to the snare. And then I phased out the amps to the DI. So let's listen to it with it in, and then I'll pop it out. Take it out. I could work without it, sure, but it allows a level of focus and a level of smearing that's gone and a level of dialing in the lower end and a low mid-range for me that I don't have to work as hard. It's all about getting the music out and being creative with the mix rather than babysitting. So that's the whole low end of the mix. So let's move on to guitars. Let's take a listen to a chorus, what we have. So usually in most of my productions, there's a lot more guitars, and I kind of orchestrate with them. But this one didn't really need it. So there's a main heavy guitar that's doubled, Les Paul through diesel tuned down, uh, went to a bus master, and that had a little more help from this for some reason, and I had the API 550s back here. So here's those parts alone. Then I wanted some kind of subhook to listen to, counterpoint for the vocal, and I added this part. Plus Paul Special P90s through a Marshall. Then I felt like I needed the chorus to grow, so I wanted to boost it up at the end, so I added these guys. So in order to make the ending like climb up and build a little more, I put this unison bending wah guitar melody. So here's all the guitars in the chorus. So in that post chorus or the reintro, there's the low guitars doing the main riff. Then I added a baritone, and because the baritone couldn't get a sub octave of all of the notes, there was some jumps in the register, so there's like a fifth harmony happening in there, so check it out. Here's another pair of guitars up the octave, doing a double to give it some more clarity. In the second pre-chorus, for a little variety and a little tension, I added another part, play that. That gives a little a little rub to make the the pre a little more nerve wracking, so you feel the chorus come in and it kind of opens up. So let's hear the guitars in the pre, all the ones we have in the second pre-chorus. the 
pre-chorus with everything in. our guitars. So there are some keyboards in the tune and they, they mainly happen in the verses for some ambience and then in the pre-chorus there's a building sound. I'll play those for you now. Have some delay. Panning. Spreading. Tension builders. Sweeper sound just kind of ramps up. And when it stops, it drops right on the downbeat with that bomb explosion. So it's almost like something's flying over you and then dropping a bomb. So let's hear all this stuff in context. So let's talk about vocals now. You see here I have a vocal for the verse, pre-chorus, and chorus. That's the lead vocal. Now that was one continuous track, but I like to separate them by section of the song, so if I have to, I can treat them differently. Also, when I'm putting up my static mix, I don't have to introduce any automation yet because I can balance them right away depending upon their section. So as you can see, they, they all go to this lead vocal aux, which has Oak Sound Soothe, which is an awesome plug-in. It just takes out harsh frequencies. It's great on vocals and acoustic guitars. Pro-Q, sweeping out some low-end for thumps, headphone noise, whatever. Phoenix 2 Crane Song Tape Emulator is pretty much a given on every vocal bus. It has a great sound. This dark essence is really, really nice. A Blue 1176, a little de -esser. And then my favorite for some air, Sound Toys, Seaman EQ, has a really silky high end. When we listen to these, you'll notice that the sound changes. And the way that it changes is in the verse, it goes through an ADT tape simulator, which is a nice sort of like an old school double tracker. We pop down and find that guy. So this is nice when you want some kind of a little bit of movement, not necessarily your doubling type of thing. And then in the um, in the verses, I also use this small wooden room setting. This gives you the feeling of not being in a, a dead vocal booth, but not really having reverb. It feels like the singer is sort of standing next to you in a small room singing. And then as it opens up into the chorus, I have one of my favorites, uh, Micro Pitch Shift. Eventide makes great stuff. I'm friends with those guys. I've done some work for them. I had my old harmonizer, and they fixed it a bunch of times, and they told me we don't have parts anymore. So I got back into the plug-in. And that has a SPL vitalizer for the stereo expander. So in the chorus, when that comes in, it, it spreads it out. Space Echo, I love the old tape unit. I have it set for a slap, 166, 177, what's that, 86 on this one. They, it varies. It's a couple of settings. And that gives you the feeling of reverb without having reverb sometimes. And a vocal plate. It's the Chris Lord Algae setting from a 480. And there's a lot of pre delays. So that way, with the pre delay up and over the 120, what's this 150, 160, it gives us the 
space before the reverb starts so the articulation of the lyrics and the vocals comes through. Then my favorite sound toys. This effect rack looks like a lot, but I had four PCM42s that I loved. And they started to go and need repairs, and I was told, once again, parts were not going to be available. So I spent a bunch of time really sitting and a being everything to try to get that sound. And what I came up with, and I went back and forth with a couple of friends and Ken at Sound Toys, was a digital delay with this micro pitch shifter and the devil lock. So these guys are for an, have them for an eighth note and a quarter. I can change it to any delay I want. And for the background vocals, I have two even tied eclipses, one on micro pitch shift and another on richer chorus, which is great. And I can use both or use some of them. And on background vocals, when I'm not using the same reverb as the lead, this AMS verb has a really nice, like, tight sound. Let's go up and check out the lead vocals and see how the sound changes from the verse, pre-chorus, and the chorus. And you'll notice when the chorus kicks in, it gets brighter because I added some of this to get it above what was going on. Our could watch the heavens bleed Orders coming down Load another round Boots are on the ground Raise another crown The world So I wanted the pre-chorus to be a little mysterious and have a little warble to it, so I added this great instant flanger, and I put the SPL Vitalizer on to give it some width. So let's talk about the chorus. I didn't really want to make it sound like the rock band with one guy singing and another guy doing the third harmony above all the way through. So we have the lead vocal center, and then he doubles and triples himself left and right. Let's listen to that. You know it's burning round me Greed and desire Feels like a million So you hear the, the depth and the strength of it, but what you also heard were these echo throws. So in every tune and in my mix template, I'm prepared to use a quick method for echo throws. So I like this Chris Lord Algae vocal. Uh, it's not the vocal one, it's the effects one, I'm sorry. And I have it set to a half note, a little bit of room, and this filter thing is nice. And then I put after it another filter to roll off highs and lows. And what I do is I just grab some audio from the lead vocal, I copy it, and then I mute or delete the words I don't want to go through the throw and let the ones I want hit it. And then I can automate the return of the throw any way I like. This looks like a lot of automation, but it was just me riding up and down the fader. So you can check that out again right there. World is on fire. So here's another a little vocal effect trick. So I have these tracks ready, three of them. And I copy the audio, and I'll pick specific things I want to put in these telephone delays and put them rhythmically however I want them. Fire, fire. So they'll pan back and forth, if you like. Here they come again. Fire, so that way you have exactly fire. what you want, where you want it. And it saves a lot of time for me, so if the tracks are there in the template. So to make this thing work, in the chorus without having the harmonies, I did want to have some kind of pad. So we did some background vocals, and this is what we did. We took one word. Fire, so that's one singer. So towards the end of the chorus, where we had those ascending guitar lines to build it more, I wanted to do something with the background vocals. So here's what we did. So let's hear the whole chorus with the lead effects and backgrounds. World is on fire. You know it's burning round me. Greed and desire. 
feels like a million degrees The walls are coming down Flames are rising round At the speed of sound The world is burning down And here's the second half to the end of the chorus in context with the band. Feels like a million degrees The walls are coming down Things are rising round At the speed of sound The world is burning down So the last vocal part that we have, we have these grunts and chants, and the idea with these was to make them speak inside of that industrial machinery type of sounds. So they're kind of funny alone, but in with the, in with the machines, they sound good. So for the processing on all the background vocals, so the processing on those kind of patty background vocals was soothed, set similarly to the lead vocal, 1176, and a vitalizer to spread it a little bit around the lead vocal. Then I have a second background vocal effects channel fed from the same bus that's snuck in there. And what I used this for was more distortion. So you saw a couple of these Saturn plugins and certain bands of distortion for certain parts of the vocals. This was pretty much across the board, giving like a saturation, a limiter to sort of push it up, and then the dimension D to make it have a little left and right movement. And I didn't want to use the same thing uh, that I used on the other one, so it gave it a little bit difference. And on the grunts and groans, we had more distortion pretty much across the top, and the limiter, and they didn't really have much effects. They had a uh, the tape, and they had a little bit of the richer chorus and they were dry. So there's all our vocals. So that was The World is on Fire by Moguls of Mayhem, Anatomy of a Mix, number one. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Hit the notification button so we can let you know when we have more. Hope you stay healthy and well. Keep making music. Thanks.